Welcome back to Fred in the Shed and I'm up in the shack and on this video we'll be having a closer look at this tiny ATS25X1 software defined shortwave radio receiver. Those of you that watch the channel you'll know that I've had an ATS20 little receiver for some time and people have been saying in the comments Fred you need to get an ATS25 in to have a look at the improvements that have been made. And yeah, I do read the comments and I have been waiting for one to come in stock. I wanted the latest version. I wanted the Times 1 version, not the ATS Plus or just the basic ATS. They have made some improvements on this latest version. And I wanted to get that one in to do the review. Just briefly going back to the ATS 20. Um, this radio, Every time I look at this on Banggood, the price has reduced. When I reviewed it, it was just over £50. The last time I checked, it was on sale for £34. Can you believe that? It is incredibly cheap. But even though it is so cheap, and to be fair to it, if you work around a few little parameters, to be fair, it's a good receiver. For as the initial box opening experience goes, yeah, it's not all that great. It comes in a plain cardboard box. There's no instructions at all for the radio. These ATS radios, they kind of assume that you know a little bit about uh, shortwave radio receivers, or they certainly assume you're willing to go off and learn a little bit about it. There's plenty of forums, there's plenty of videos on these units. You can pick them up quite easily. Now, in the box, straight away, you do get a charge lead. It's a USB-C, that's quite nice to get. There is a telescopic antenna it's a BNC connector there it's uh, it's okay it's not bad it, it does the job really with this radio you're not going to get the best out of it unless you use an external antenna even if you use just a single long wire although on these cheaper radios you're probably better to use a, a coax that has some earth screening and that will cut down on any interference Finally, in the box, there's two things. You, you get the little rubber stick-on feet that you have to put them on yourself. That's not a problem. And then you get this rather weird keyring thing. And I, I really didn't know what this was. I thought at first it might be something you can prod the screen with to save using your finger. But no, it's, it's um, a three-way screwdriver and spanner. So I don't know why they've given you that. Maybe to service the radio. Not really sure. Although the unboxing experience isn't much of an experience, once you've got the radio in your hand, it's quite nicely made. I think it's certainly acceptable at this level. The top and bottom is brushed aluminium construction or aluminium, if you're watching from the States. The rear panel and the front panel, the same as the A2S20, appears to be um, a fiberglass construction. It almost looks like a piece of PCB, printed circuit board, that's been silk screened over. Might be the case. I, I think, well, maybe being a bit picky, but it might have been nicer if they'd have used matching aluminium plates there. Looking on top of the radio, I'm glad that they've carried over that large 3-inch, 1.5-watt, 4-ohm speaker. Um, my OCD is playing up on me here because I, I notice it's slightly offset. If you see that silver dust cap on this, it is slightly offset. I have looked on other forums and have said that the speaker is just hot glued to the case so hopefully it will stay there um yeah i'm not quite sure why that is offset it won't affect the performance it's me being a little bit anal about it maybe moving around to the back of the radio laid out very similar to the ats 20 starting on this side you have the same fm and shortwave switch so that will be spending most of its time on shortwave bnc antenna connector feels quite uh, quite strong there if you're going to use a 2259 pl 259 get yourself a cheap adapter headphone socket um yeah okay um i think that would have been better maybe on the front of the unit power on off switch same as before and then the usb lead there for charging and also for updating the software connecting to a computer and a little tiny led charge light moving back to the front so this one has got a touchscreen massive improvement over the a2s 23 inch lcd it is reasonably, reasonably sensitive to the touch there, which is quite responsive. Yeah, it's okay. It's not a smartphone. I always find that if you use one of these rubber-tipped adapters like you get on the end of a end of a pen, it works better. But 
yeah, that's acceptable. That's acceptable. And then we have the tuning encoder there. And this does feel much better. That's got a much nicer action. Feels a lot more precise, a lot solid. Yeah, I'm liking that. It's also a larger size. It's still clicky, of course. It's not uh, linear. And might have been better if there was an indent in there so you could roll it around on your finger there. But uh, we'll, we'll find out how it works in practice. But overall, yeah, that's uh, a big, big improvement on Just the Just going to go through some of the specs on the radio. Right, the central processor is still an Arduino-based radio, exactly the same as the A2S20. What is important, though, and what you need to look out for is that model number. ATS 25 times 1 is the latest version. It launched as an ATS 25, then it went to ATS 25 Plus. The difference is, is the built-in radio chip that runs with the Arduino. The original one had the SI4732. That's the same chip that was in the ATS 20, its smaller brother. The later version has been upgraded, now runs the SI4735-32. stroke So you get the latest chip in the latest Operating radio. Operating software, I believe the original A2S25 had version 2. I understand there was a few teething problems with that. The later one, this one, should be running version 4, 4.1. The software will be continually updated, of course. Uh, there is the USB on the back, and computer-minded people can always upgrade their model to the latest Tuning version. modes and frequencies start off with FM, does the broadcast band, also tunes all the way down to uh, 64 megahertz for some reason not quite sure but basically 64 to 108 also has the rds system which is the radio data system if you want to use that but most of you are going to use this on shortwave medium wave is there as well as long wave medium wave 520 to 710 and then shortwave wide band here all the way from 1730 right up to 30 adjustable mix. bandwidth on the tuning there from 0.5 to battery 4k wise has a built-in 2000 mah lithium iron battery it took me about just over two hours to fully charge it when it arrived it's it was heavier than i thought it's not heavy i wouldn't say it's a heavy radio but weighs 500 grams or 1.1 pounds just going to have a closer look at the screen now and some of the on-screen menus First thing is the frequency display. Now they've they've made this like an imitation back backlit LCD, a bit like the ASU 450. It looks better in real life than it's coming across on the camera. But you can see some of the back segments are lit. Um, it looks like it needs to be a contrast control to knock that out. I think that could be a little bit uh, clearer, but a big improvement on the ATS20 is we now have a power meter. I don't know how accurate this is. I haven't got an antenna attached and it's showing me an S4 signal. But um, for shortwave, you don't really need it. it it's nice to Looking have. Looking at the screen itself, we've got a lot of these shortcut touchscreen buttons. First one on the left-hand side here, we'll press that. That's ham. That's a shortcut. And on there, you've got quick access to all the recognised ham bands. Next to the ham button is a general band select. Now, quite pleased when I put this on, we have now CB option on the top right here. So I clicked on that, and this takes us directly to 27 megs, 11 meters. But unfortunately, when we just go into mode there, we're still only offered lower sideband, upper sideband, AM and CW. There's still no FM option, which is a shame. And here in the UK, we, we do rely on FM quite a lot for local comms. And I believe back in America as well, I believe you've got FM now as well. So that's a bit of a shame. I was hoping that with the ATS25, we were going to be given Next FM. Next button is your direct frequency input. Very, very straightforward. Just type it in what you want, and then you can change the mode. Going up to the top, we have a volume button. If you want to press that, then move the tuning there. Adjust the volume. Likewise, if you press on the tuning knob, that will default straight into volume. That's an improvement than the up and down clicky buttons on the Below 20. The volume control is the AGC, the automatic gain control. Um, that appears just to be an off and on switch. I can't see that there's any fast or slow 
adjustment which uh, would have been would have been quite nice. Below the AGC button now we have an attenuator. Now we didn't have this on the 20 and this can be adjusted up. This will help block out some of those stronger signals that were causing a problem before so especially good on the CB band and uh, yeah I'll be looking forward to adjusting that and seeing how we get on when we do some on-air testing. Below that a simple mode switch lower sideband, upper sideband, uh, AM and CW. Back across now onto the bottom row. There we have the BFO switch. By pressing that, changes the tuning there to a BFO control. It's more like a fine tuning control than a beat frequency oscillator. Uh, we're going to be testing that when we get into the shack, but hopefully we won't have to use uh, too much Clarify. We had to use a hell of a lot of Clarify on the 20 to bring stations Next in. to the BFO, we can then change the step rate this is mostly going to be on shortwave on the am band but you can see there we've got one five nine and ten kilohertz moving across from the step control we have the bandwidth control this will uh, this will change depending what band you're listening on but here you can uh, select which bandwidth you want so that covers the first screen options, not too complicated, fairly straightforward. Then we have a little next button written, it's uh, in green here, stuck up in green. Over here we have, I'm not going to start it now, but we have a scan function and you can change the up and down motion which way you would like the radio to scan. Then we have a light option, um, this just changes the background light on the LCD panel, um, doesn't do much for the contrast unfortunately, but so uh, you can switch, the complete, switch it completely off and select what you want, I suppose that will have an impact on the battery. The next two buttons labelled chip and info, here we can find out about the firmware and what version of software we're currently using. If we click on the chip button there, this gives you all of the firmware information, all of this is upgradable if you're computer savvy via the USB-C socket in the back and the same way with the info gives us the Arduino software we're running um, this one's shipped with a version 3.4 I believe it's up to something like version uh, 5.3 so the options there to upgrade personally I'll see how this goes if it's working fine uh, haven't got any issues I will leave it alone but uh, if you're a computer savvy fanboy well this is where you want to be you can upgrade this to your heart's content. Quickly moving up to the last stack now the first first two buttons are for the FM use on the receiver we have an RDS setting there I'll assume that when we're receiving with an antenna that will bring up the RDS display and then we have FM and there are uh, it looks like a number of built-in presets with RDS control, I'm assuming that's what they are, so maybe we could tune directly into those. Below that we have a retro setting, this changes the look of the display into a retro dial, like something off of a shortwave receiver. Um, yeah, I suppose it's okay if you're going to use the commercial band. It's not something that I'll be using so moving myself. Moving on, we have the memory settings here. This is where you're putting your radio memories. I believe there's 75. I think. Um, yeah, I haven't really played with this. I probably won't be using that. I'll just be using the shortwave and a direct frequency uh, entry system. And finally, we have a setup button. These are all of the menu setups here. How the radio um, starts when you switch it on. A reset button, which I'm not going to press. And then coming on here, yep, yeah, this is where we've got all of the uh, settings hidden in the menu. So I'm going to probably go through these myself, set the radio up as I like it and again you've got a chance here just to adjust things, set it how you would like. Well there you go, it's nice to learn something isn't it? Looking in the setup menu I've noticed there it says digit backlight so I've switched that off and now when I return to the frequency display that is a lot clearer, that looks a lot better. Um, why they shipped it with that switched on I don't know because it didn't look very nice. Right, I think it's about time to get this bad boy down into the shed shack. I'm going to connect it to my Antron 99CB antenna. Not really the most ideal antenna for shortwave listening, 
um, that that's what I'm going to use. Obviously, it's a coaxial antenna, so it, we have a screening on the uh, feed, and I think that will help with interference. So let's get this down in the shed shack, and let's hear how it sounds. Setting up now in the shed shack. It's a very, very hot day today. It's going to be one of the hottest days ever recorded in the UK, so I've got the unit on a little calling pad there. And just a first check on FM, just to see how that speaker sounds on FM. Yeah, and just like the ATS-20 before it, that large three inch speaker sounds really quite nice. I can't play any pop music or anything like that because of copyright. Anyway, we're not here to test this on FM. Let's um, get all this set up on shortwave. We'll find some commercial radio stations, see if I can get some ham radio stations. I'll probably save the CB sideband stuff. I'll probably do that on another video. Obviously this doesn't do the FM band which we use in the UK. Right, let's crack on. I do apologise about screen reflection. It's a very bright day here in the shed shack. I'm struggling, struggling a little bit with it. Just one feature that I didn't realise the radio had, I've just discovered and I think it's quite cool. When you press the scan button there, I thought that would just go into a seek scan, but it doesn't. It brings up a kind of spectrum display. It's not live as such, but let me demonstrate. We're going to press scan. Now the radio is uh, scanning and you're getting sort of a spectrum scope showing where the stations are on the frequency there. Like I say, it's not live like a waterfall which is a bit of a pity. So that's quite useful. I mean, if it was live, it would be brilliant. It doesn't, it doesn't move. When you reach the end of the scale there, um, it doesn't refresh, unfortunately, which is a bit of a shame. It just goes along and then, uh, yeah, you can sort of see, just about make out, it, it, then, it then finishes. But it's still quite useful, that's, that's quite a good tuning aid, I didn't realise you got that. One thing I wanted to check straight away was the attenuation control because the ATS-20 was so easily overloaded. How was the human soul created? In what sense was man created? In the image of God? How does population increase prove the truthfulness of the Genesis account of creation? That is a very interesting question and answer. In addition to giving satisfying answers to these and many other questions, the creation book cites the opinions of many noted scientists The manual tune on the shortwave broadcast band works absolutely fine and that VFO is a massive improvement on the previous model but I wanted to test the seek function next. Now I've got to say I found the seek up and down scan function um, a little bit erratic. Occasionally it would pick up a station but a lot of the time I just seem to get a load of static. I couldn't find any way to adjust it either. Of course you do have direct frequency input if you know the station you're looking for and then there's that single scan function so let's give that a go and see how that works.
and that worked quite well. Of course, this is the broadcast band where stations are transmitting all the time. If you're trying to pick up a conversation on the ham bands, you have to remember this only takes a snapshot. It's not a live feed, so that might not be quite so easy. Next, I moved on to 11 meters CB band and upper side band, tuned into our 27305 group. Like the ATS-20, this 25 model did require quite a bit of adjustment on the BFO, but once I got things clear, the guys actually sounded quite good. Yeah, sounds good. Um, you know, it's all Straight off the bat, the 25 seems to cope with the 11 meter band better than the 20 did, but I do need to do further testing with some stronger stations. Now the manual tuning on the shortwave broadcast band in 1 kHz steps is pretty good, it's a big improvement on the last radio. I did find something odd when you went on to sideband, it seemed every now and then on regular occurrences the radio made a kind of chuffing sound like a a rush of um, static. Let me show you what I mean. absolutely no idea what was causing that but it did get a little annoying when I was trying to manually tune the radio. Next I had a little tune around the handbands. Now my CB antenna it's not tuned for the handbands you really need a long wire but anyway this is what I got. Going to come to the conclusion part now. I've had this radio a couple of weeks, been playing with this in the shed shack. I've had a lot of fun with this Firstly, radio. Firstly, if you're a gadget man, a bit like myself, if you like new toys in the shack, and you're into a little bit of casual shortwave radio listening, perhaps casual CB skip sideband if listening. perhaps you've got the ATS-20 like I have, and you're thinking, is it worth upgrading to the ATS-25? Again, I would say yes, absolutely definitely. The biggest improvement between the two radios is this VFO encoder. It is so much of an improvement from the cheap and nasty one that you got with the A2S20. That in itself and also of course the larger touch screen. Um, I've had no issues with the touch screen using a little rubber pusher there. The ATS20 a very small, very clear but very small screen. Bigger screen on this radio it's uh, compared to the little one it's a joy to probably use. Probably the biggest thing about these Arduino based radios certainly for people that want to get involved in upgrading is they are fully upgradable the firmware and the software fully upgradable on the ATS25 you've got a USB C lead there uh, doesn't come with, with does come with a lead actually yeah it does come with a lead and you can connect that to a computer you can then download the latest firmware 
things will be continually improved it's a progressive radio it's not sitting still so in a year's time you could have an entirely different radio or maybe some of the uh, things that slightly annoyed me on the radio they may have been sorted out with a firmware and software upgrade. if you're a little bit more serious about your shortwave radio listing perhaps you've um, got access to better quality receivers there will be a few little things that you will find annoying it's not perfect yet there are still things they could they can improve myself um i found just on sideband that static kind of chuffing noise when you went through the vfo every now and then there would be like a static sort of discharge um i did find that a little bit annoying to be perfectly honest the agc control um on both these radios i i actually don't think that it really does anything um, i tried switching it on and off this one does have an, an attenuator so it does have an attenuator to reduce some of those strong signals i will be doing another video on this when uh, i get onto a cb radio net and we'll see how it copes with some very very strong signals that i have locally because people crank it up on nets and i'll be interested to see if that attenuator can work and control it. It does work on the shortwave band. I was able to turn down some relatively powerful radio signals. One thing I think they can improve on, certainly for shortwave, is the tuning step. Now it's absolutely fine on sideband here. You can go down to one tenth of a kilohertz there, and that's absolutely perfect on sideband. When you change into AM mode, the lowest tuning step you can tune is one kilohertz. And I just think that's perhaps a little bit coarse for serious shortwave radio listening. One feature that I do like though, is that scan feature. It's a shame it doesn't come up as a live feed, a live spectrum scope, with a, especially with a waterfall, that would have been good. I haven't got an antenna connected at the moment, but the fact that it tunes across the band and it allows you to see the stations on shortwave and then tune into them, it saves a lot of time. One thing that I didn't find so successful was just the basic up and down seek options. Um, when I connected this connected to a decent antenna, it stopped at random places. It would go past some medium strength shortwave stations. It did pick up the strong ones, but it would skip the medium ones and it would just stop at random places and just pick up static i don't know why it did that um to be honest it, it made it pretty useless to be honest i didn't really use it i just used the manual tune or put in the direct frequency i think in general terms the receive quality is very much like the ats20 which is no surprise because they're both uh, an arduino based radio i said at the beginning it's, it's got the same speaker you've got that three inch speaker it does go very loud it is very clear there's there's no real bass if you wanted to listen to music or anything like that you, you're going to be using probably headphones on this anyway and it, it's a bit of a shame as i said at the beginning of the video it, they could have maybe just squeezed the headphone socket on the front of the radio it's not a biggie but i think that would have helped slightly so yeah overall my conclusions it, it's a nice little radio it's pretty well made actually at most aluminium construction there um, it's much much easier to use than the ats20 good screen um, yeah there's a few things they can improve on it i think they will improve that in with future software updates i think that's the beauty of the radio it's, it's progressive but yeah i've had an absolute uh, blast with it i've had a lot of like fun i said it. i want to do some further testing get some very strong local sideband cb radio stations coming in we will test out that attenuator see how it copes with strong signals but yeah overall I think it's a good little gadget, it's a good little toy, it's a good little bit of fun there. I'll leave links to buy this in the description. When I um, made this video, Banggood were offering a discount code for Fred in the Shed viewers. I think it comes in at about uh, $99. 80 something pounds something like that um, i'll put that in the description don't beat me up if you're watching this in a year's time and the code is no longer valid but to be honest these things they, they, they generally come down in price uh, gonna anyway. bring this one to a close now i do appreciate this has been a long video i've just looked at the timeline it's gone on quite a long time if you've watched this all the way through cheers guys i really appreciate it sticking with such a long video there's the thumb thumbs up from fred in the shed as usual if you could give that to me as well down below 
I'd appreciate that. It helps me, helps the channel. Buying links for this radio and a discount code from Banggood are in the description. And as I say, look out for another review in the future when I test it on the sideband CB net. But as for now, as always, please, please, please stay safe. Look after each other. Cheers, guys. Catch you on the next one.